The climate change narrative is a joke. It's a wrong framework. I'm going to show you today the solutions that we are proposing for the real problems that people face in rural areas. And from there, we can build on this. So this is a biomass contour. We have taken cuttings and used some of the native species that were already here to arrange a contour line where we can pile up biomass. This is brand new. This is all going to sink down and decompose. And I have a slightly older one here up above us. And you can see it takes a little bit of work. You got to put in some wood. You got to um, make sure it all stacks up correctly and arranges itself. But these are on contour. And what they're going to do is address one of the major issues that we have down here in these steep slopes, which is erosion. Water comes from the sky, it flows down, and instead of absorbing into the soil, it gets some velocity and heads down and takes soil with it. And that topsoil is the fertility. So erosion causes fertility loss and even uh, landslides. And so what we want to do is slow it down and so it'll filter through the biomass. As that biomass is decomposing, it'll maintain some humidity, which helps with uh, dr uh, dry spells and uh, keeps humidity in the earth longer. And so now we're going to go to a little older one and we're going to show what happens here as these things develop. Now we're here on the underside of a more developed contour and you see all of these cuttings. All of these cuttings have sprouted and they're providing shade so the moisture absorbed here, the humidity absorbed by this biomass contour is going to stay longer. It's got shade and in fact these plants right here, this is a tibuchina which is something that we use a lot, really great for firewood, really great for fence posts. Uh, this will give places for birds to perch. And so birds will start coming and they'll perch. This used to be all grassy field with coffee. And they will perch there and they will start to spread seeds from other regions. And so we can go along this contour and we can start to see little sprouts, little trees here that are coming up, these are going to add into the contour. They're going to come up and participate. Here's a Resinus comunis. We got tons of native species and the birds are the ones eating the seeds. They're going to come and they're going to start to improve the biodiversity of these contours. I'm going to take you down to one that's even a few years older than this. So we're down here and we're on contour. This contour was started three years ago and now we continue to pile up biomass. The biomass decomposes and all the prunings, all the cuttings, all the cleanings we do, we throw it on here. And now you can see the Tibuchina is still here. It's still here. But this contour is now dominated by native pioneer species. Niguito, Espadero, Lombricero. And also we've used other cuttings like Madre Agua. These are native species. These are going to be different in every region. Let me take you down a little bit further here. And you can see how these contours develop. They're filling with native species. Different native species and they continue to hold the line. Right? We can go around on the downside. We got here Cordoncillo. This part is a little bit less developed. We continue to expand the contours left and right along the slopes. We've got nitrogen fixing natives. And so as we get into this, we start to develop shade. Now shade also helps control the humidity, control the temperature. It also, with the verticality, gives us more space to cultivate. We have all sorts of things and we have plenty of space between our contours to cultivate. Coffee, corn, beans, whatever we like. But every once in a while, Every 30 feet, every 50 feet, depending on the slope, we are going to be able to put in a contour. Over time, we're going to control the erosion. We're going to improve the biodiversity. Now, all sorts of birds and animals, mammals, sloths, uh, possums, squirrels, they come through here and they're participating, right? Well, another cool thing about these contours is the fruit from the fruit trees, when it falls in the ground and rolls, avocados, guavas, uh, mandarinas, mandarin oranges, they come down, they roll, they stop right on contours. You can come along and pick up, 
pick up. A lot of people say you can't grow fruits on steep slopes. Well, you can if you have contour traps for your fruit, right? And so these trees also provide leaves, right? They are producing biomass. All this is the carbon cycle. The leaves are falling down in there are increasing the fertility of the soil through their leaf litter. Some of them, like the ice cream bean, is a nitrogen fixer. This is free nitrogen. We don't need to bring nitrogen in from Ukraine or Russia. We can trap nitrogen from the air on contour with our nitrogen fixing species, native nitrogen fixing species. So we can solve fertility problems, erosion problems, biodiversity problems. We are also contributing to water availability and quality. So when we are controlling for the humidity, giving some shade, making a water trap, helping it sink into the soil, not only are we improving our access to water locally in the soil storage, which means we need to irrigate less, there's less times of the year we need to irrigate, we're also encouraging that water to filter through the soil and come out through its natural water cycle, come out down uh, the, the natural springs which feed the rivers, and the streams and the quebradas, these things are improving their flow because we're trapping more water. The river is not filling up with dirty surface water runoff. It is being naturally fed by this ground filtering process because it's being slowed down on contour. We're solving so many problems with one simple technique we're dedicating very little space, really, just every 50 feet or even more, depending on the slope again. We are adding in these contours, increasing the biodiversity. We also have the issue of pests. Pests. Well, when you increase the biodiversity and add in, have space for birds, a lot of these pests get taken care of by themselves, right? Monoculture brings in pests, but the biological controls, both insects, carnivorous wasps, birds, they need space to enter into your ecosystem. And when you stop using poisons because you start having some biological controls, that only increases. So with one simple technique, we've solved like six problems for rural people, all of which have been wrapped up in the false frame of climate change. So it's a lie. It's not true. We can continue to innovate and implement these solutions, and we can do better. We can grow more food than ever on less space than ever. We can increase soil fertility, increase biodiversity, and we're doing it. It's happening right now. Stop giving your attention to these lies. And pay attention to the real solutions and maybe even start implementing them in your life. Follow along and I'll give you some tips. Maybe not all of you live in a rural area, but a lot of these things can be applied anywhere you are. So stay tuned.